Good morning. Good morning. There you are. Right <laughs> as ever. Thank you so much, Dr. Mukherjee. <laughs> and looking forward to this. Clubs are a legacy of our colonial past, but its culture remains embedded in the DNA of Calcutta, Kolkata. These clubs originally began as places of British refuge and entertainment for the officials who visited the city. Today, they stand as testimonies of the cultural past of the city, which thrive on and are just as elite even today, making them excellent edifices of the continuity of heritage. We at Calcutta Heritage Collective have been doing a series on the glorious heritage clubs of Calcutta, the clubs that is the ethos of this very city. And this morning, we bring to you one of the most pristine clubs of Calcutta in existence for over 150 years. It is in fact in its 163rd year, the Calcutta Rowing Club. Calcutta Rowing Club was founded in 1858 and is one of the oldest rowing clubs of its kind outside the UK. The Calcutta Rowing Club, as its crest suggests, was founded by a small number of enthusiastic mm -hmm. men in 1858. This makes it one of the older clubs than the, uh, and even uh, the one that was founded in Shanghai and probably the oldest rowing club in the East. And to talk about this esteemed club this morning, we have Dr. Shumon Mukherjee, celebrated economist and educator. He has been a member of Calcutta Rowing Club for over 50 years. He was initially a rowing member at the Lake Club and was captain of St. Xavier's College rowing team, 1958 to 69. As a senior scholar, he bit a CRC oarsman, 20 men in Pagal Regatta before leaving for Delhi School of Economics in 1970. He was invited to join CRC the next year, being one of the few initial Indian members to join CRC. Dr. Mukherjee, a very, very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Yes. So, hundred, so thousand yards of serenity and over 100 year, years of history. 163 years to be exact. One of the prettiest sites at the lakes. And yet, it did take its time to settle in its pristine locale at the Dhakuria Lakes. In 1858, the club in its first avatar was in fact just a boathouse on the banks of the Hooghly near Chadpal Ghat. From there to Khidirpur Dock in 1897, to the Majirhat Boat Canal in 1908, and then finally to Dhakuria in 1928. The first boathouse was a thatched roof on the banks of the Hooghly. This boathouse was built in 1860 and lasted until 1854 when a disastrous cyclone swept it all away. The successor to this boathouse was built near the fort in 1865, but the inmates of the fort alleged that it would interfere with the field of fire of their guns should an enemy fleet sail up the Hooghly. In 1888, the club had to abandon its boathouse near the fort as the land was wanted by the port commissioners. A lease was granted for the building of a new boathouse in Strand Road opposite to Eden Gardens. Rowing took place there during succeeding years, but became progressively more difficult owing to the increase in the number of steam ferry boats and tugs. In 1897, however, the port commissioners came to the rescue and offered a course on the dock basin at Kibipur, which is now occupied by the canal dock. With the construction of the Dhakuria Lake in 18, 1928, the club moved to its present location, 15 Rovindra Sharbar, Calcutta, 29. Do tell us more about the initial years, Dr. Mukherjee. Yes, let's begin by saying the sport of rowing is by no means an innovation of the East. In fact, it came from the British shores. In uh, rowing, as far as I know, was an intercollege event until 1815. It used to take place amongst clubs in Oxford. It was essentially a activity involving the youth and also in Cambridge. Uh, a gentleman who was actually had twin uh, loyalties, Charles Wordsworth, the nephew of Williams Wordsworth. Uh, he had uh, twin loyalties because his 
father was a um, Cambridge Don, and he was a student of Christ Church College in Oxford. Uh, he started this rivalry between Cambridge and Oxford. It started with the Lord's cricket match in 1827, and uh, I think uh, Oxford fared very well, but uh, the match remained unresolved because of rain. To settle scores, Cambridge challenged them to a rowing event, and that again in two years later, 1829. The first uh, university Cambridge club was actually formed in 1828 and the Oxford club well came a bit later by 1830-39. But ironically, um, what really took the rowing forward was the Henley rowing event. And all the concepts that we have in India, particularly in Calcutta are all borrowed concepts. For instance, they are the head of the river, which is a competition amongst university clubs, Cambridge and River Camp. We have the head of the lakes, which is a competition amongst all the city clubs surrounding Rabindra Shorobar. They had uh, the Henley Regatta, and Henley is what is the Mecca of rowing. Uh, our own leader, in the captain in our, in, a, in our context, Macklin, he thought in terms of having an ARAE round uh, of the East, and uh, this was plotted in Rangoon. And we have uh, the ARAE Amateur Rowing Association of the East. So if you if you look at it, most of the concepts are borrowed. I can see in that picture, you're you're giving us a picture of a cox, the one who's facing the four oarsmen. The one at the top is called the stroke. He's actually the one who sets the rhythm of the boat. He's the strongest person of the boat because he can crack a boat. It's the speed of movement and how fast he moves down the slide that determines all activity. Behind him is three, who is the spine of the boat, giving strength on the left side. Powering the stroke on the right is, this, is two just behind him. And the last man, is uh, the bow he balances the boat and mind you rowing is an art it has to be perfected and you can see the bamboo pole at the at the in this corner where you have a boat tied and it's called a punt boat where people practice their strokes it's very important that even when you're fatigued and in the height of spirit you don't catch a crab what is that when your speed when your oar does not fall in right angles but sort of goes in in an obtuse angle and catches a crab and the boat can capsize. And uh, if it is just a feather and you sort of go in an obtuse angle and skim through the water, then it's a wash. All these cannot take place in a competition. So you need hours and hours of practice. And uh, the and the co coxswain, the man with a cap at top, is the one who's supposed to be light we have races where even ladies sit there, um, more or less the coach and the time setter. He tells the crew when to speed up and when to slow down and when to speed up again. At the start of the race in, in Ruby the Shorobor, we have a thousand yards course here. We used to have about a quarter, three fourths of a mile when we did the Barrackpool row. In Cambridge, the Oxford race is about six and a half kilometers. But in Calcutta, the Rovindra Shorobor can afford only a thousand yards course. So this man sets the pace and the cox asks you to take a rowing start. And this gentleman on the stroke and all of them are on sliding seats. They move up and they don't go the whole tilt. They go half, half, three fourths, three fourths, full strength. And that sort of picks up in a jump, it literally jumps and then you're is killing through the water. And he gives you a paddle 10, which are 10 strokes. And then he asks you to go on a steady length. Midway, he gives you another 10. And when you're coming into the last patches, and you know, there are three islands on this. We will discuss that later. He gives you a 10 and he says 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And when you go through the uh, when you're uh, 
rudder sort of crosses the finishing line, he says, easy oars. So easy oars, as you can see on the banks, we have our tables laid out and that's where the crowd cheers you. There are two flanks of uh, Ruby the Shorter Ball. On the left, you have uh, the Calcutta side. On the right, we have the southern side. This is the northern side. This is the Calcutta side. On the northern side, the bank is called the Tolican side. And between the two islands, there are three islands there. Between the two islands, you get a straight line from the top of the lake right to the pontoon here. And that's your thousand yards mark. And uh, this is where the rowing takes place. So it's, it's a very favorite course for all oarsmen. It's like uh, it's down the memory lane and everybody cherishes that, uh, those waters. That's about rowing in Calcutta. But you need to know that we started in 1858. But how far back did rowing really start? You'll get an idea that this is not so late because in London Rowing Club, that started two years earlier, 1856. And many of the clubs, in, in, in even in on the West Coast, which is America, they started late 1860s, 1880s, San Francisco, for instance, 1873, Dolphin Club, 1877. There are several CRCs, by the way. There's Calgary Rowing Club um, in, in Canada. There's California Rowing Club. There's Colombo Rowing Club. When, but when you refer to CRC, it is invariably Calcutta Rowing Club. And this is which has actually inherited all the events that you had in London. So, uh, and we had many clubs here and adjoining to Calcutta, we have the Karachi Rowing Club, the Rangoon Rowing Club, the Hong Kong Rowing Club, the Colombo Rowing Club. We have Bombay, Chennai, which is, which is still Madras Rowing Club. We had a club in Pune and of course in Karnataka. Yeah, we had another one. So we've had competition between them and the, and the competition that takes place is called the RAE. So that's something about rowing. If you, if you would like to know more, I'll be happy to contribute. The art, science, beauty, and synchronicity of this wonderful sport called rowing. Thank you so much for the details of the glorious tradition of this wonderful sport. But it's also interesting to ask you about the women. It's always an interesting phenomena to see the activities of ladies, particularly in historic times. I understand there used to be a special ladies race and a special ladies club. Do tell us, Dr. Mukherjee, since when did the club take lady members? See, lady members, uh, in CRC, which was essentially a British club, has been there ever since uh, the club was formed. Uh, we we can look at in recorded history. In 1870, I can see the Harper's Weekly recording the women's competitive e event, and that, that can be traced back to the 19th century, and uh, which was a double skulls race. And then you had uh, the famous Margaret Mack Mendrick, who coxed England five times in 60s, and Great Britain reached the finals and Olympics in 1980. Um, the new Newnham College Boat Club was formed in England, Cambridge in 1927. First women's boat race was between Oxford and Cambridge, um, even as early as that. And Einstein Bear, called Mother of Women Rowing, formed the Philadelphia Girls Rowing Club in 1936. Women's races were introduced though, as late as 1951 in the European uh, Roman Rowing Championships. And, but in, India, in Calcutta, the ladies of Calcutta Rowing Club were seriously involved in rowing from the very inception. And their competition, particularly in Pagan Regatta was between clubs, between the swimming club, the Saturday club, the ladies club of um, Saturday club with CRC, and even later Lake Club ladies joined. And we have the Pagal Regatta where there's, there is the uh, plate given to 
uh, the winning crew. So you can see that rowing team from the archives of CRC. So ever since the beginning, the women have been rowing, but initially they were a butt of ridicule. Today, they have brought in a lot of honor. Even in the Olympics and the Asians, we target in uh, ladies and they are coming in the forefront of rowing, which is a very wonderful thing. How interesting is that? Records show that the first boat that the CRC owned was a six oared boat purchased from a Mr. Gavin of Salkia at a cost of rupees 300. In the following year, a four was imported from Hong Kong for a sum of rupees 448. And in 1872, Mr. Charles Newman, one of the members of the club, brought back with him from England a sculling boat fitted with a sliding seat. The owner, one had for some time been propounding his theories regarding this type of seat, and he might lay some claim to have been its inventor. Boats have their own history, and so does your incredible boathouse, which has been there from the very inception at Dhakaria. Your incredible boathouse was there from the very beginning, and as we can see on the screen on the left, the boathouse is as it is today, and the image on the right shows the boathouse as it was there in the yesteryears with very, very minor changes. Do tell us a little more about the boathouse, the boats, the races, and the regattas, Dr. Mukherjee. Yes, it's uh, for any oarsman, the boathouse is a temple. And if you enter the temple, you see that the boats are kept in a particular way. Uh, it's kept upside down so that the water drips off. Initially, they were clinker boats, which is real pieces put aside one another. But nowadays you have uh, fiber boats and they are spherical and round and they are, there are no joints. But the rowing as it started were of clinker material. As you can see, the boats are all hanging up and down. So sort of, that sort of drip dries the, the boats. The beauty about rowing is these boats are lifted by the oarsmen. They carry their boats on their heads, you know, on raised arms, including the cocks, and perhaps just one maji who would take you down the pontoon and you would slide down the top of the pontoon onto the boat or on the side if it's a big one, it's if it's a force. There are many kinds of boats. You have uh, senior force, which are narrow foursomes. Uh, on the on the sides as you can see there there are uh, there are certain spandles where the board is, board is locked uh, and uh, you have you have large oars the very old oars that you are seeing on the left out there and this is locked and uh, if the civil sort of gives way then the bow oar comes out and your boat can capsize so first thing is that you sit in the boat in a particular manner you put your leg between the slides and then you put in the other one and then slip slip down to your seat if it's a single person rowing as you can see on the on the down um, side of the picture you see it's a single board it's more like a whiff uh, and a broader one which are on the bank are called dinghies so if it's a single chap uh, rowing with the left and the right arms both coming into play, it's called a skull. If, if it's a twosome, then it's called a pairs. But sometimes you also have double skulls, which means there are two sitting together, but they are using both the arms. And then you have fours. In, in Calcutta waters, we never have eights, but in Cambridge and Oxford, they have eights. We have uh, four on the right side and four on the left side. And we have events comprising of races involving all these types of boats and therefore it's called a regatta. Regatta is a Venetian term referring to races. Uh, it means a series of races which involves senior foes, junior foes, novices foes, pairs, double skulls, junior skulls and of course there are losers plates and losers foes and, uh, and other events too. So when you have a series of events, we call that a regatta, and that's popular right around the world. And India, Calcutta has quite a few important regattas. We have the head of the lakes, which is a 
amongst the surrounding clubs in Rabindra Sharabar, we have the nationals, we have the ARAE, which involves other countries also. Uh, we also have on the Rowing Federation of India, preparation for Asians as well as for Olympics. And now it's become a big event where it's under SAI and the Rowing Federation of India. Earlier, it used to be essentially a, a, cl a club event, a sporting event, social as well as extremely uh, requiring extreme amount of tenacity and skill. So that's so much about rowing. Although we have not come to the level of winning prizes at the Olympics, we have come closest to winning, uh, let's say, in, in one of the events, which is the Skulls. We did have, we have won the uh, gold in the Asians in 2010. And even in women's events, we won the bronze the two ladies from Orissa. They formed a double skulls and they won it. How wonderful is that? Uh, but apart from the boathouse and the wonderful boats, there is another part of the club which is extremely special and that is the bar. The bar is resplendent even today, not only because of its chic and contemporary look, but also because of its historicity. The bar too remains exactly where it was and has been renovated to modern standards. So if we actually look to the image on the left, we see the bar exactly as it is today. And the image on the right shows the bar as it was in 1932. And we can see the thatch, we can see the oars, we can see the crest, and excepting the seats in the front, uh, the architecture pretty much remains the same. Uh, yes. Also. You have cane chair on this side, which is so typically British. We have now got a very polished interior done. But there's something very, very interesting about this bar. And as you see that picture, you show a cellar. I think this is the only club in India which has a cellar. It is as old as 18, uh, it's 1928. Uh, the cellar is where we kept, keep our spirits high. And after a bout of rowing, we go to the, the gym, and we dry ourselves and take our bath, and then we come and hit this bar for our ref refreshing uh, nimbupani, fresh line. And then, as the as the night wanes in, we we raise toasts to one another. So that's the place of joy and celebration. And the cellar that you see, I'm happy to show the picture there. That's something which is unique to CRC. I don't think any club in India has a cellar uh, on, on, the, on the other side. There's a particular way in which uh, the bearers used to serve us. Not now, though. They used to be liveried. Only white-gloved bearers would serve us. And uh, we had bronze, and leather, and mahogany uh, bars. Happily, they've been changed to a modern outfit now. It's a very pristine, they've kept the same style. Uh, we still have the high table with barrels to sit on. And invariably, like all British clubs, we have a huge television set where we watch the football and the cricket and the rugby and the rowing events. So this is a place of joy. For every Oseman, we look forward to this. And it's the talk of the town, I think. We have the best uh, spirits in this club and the food is something which is worth talking about the uh, the best spirits and certainly the only club in the city with its very very own special cellar but then again let us see the prestige that the british associated with this club i've given to understand that the viceroy himself used to be the president at one point of time dr mukherjee yeah, you can you can see how important this is because you have uh, the club had its presence and as you can see, the viceroy was the president of the club and he donated what is called the Willingdon Trophy. If at ARA you have four events and all the four events, this amateur rowing association of the East, all the four trophies have been given are in names of CRC. Um, let's say the Mohicans. 
The Willingdon Trophy is about uh, the Viceroy Earl of Willingdon. We have the Venerables Trophy by Mr. Venerable. We have the Maclean Skulls. He's been one of the finest scholars, and uh, he donated the Maclean Skulls. I'm sure you're going to show the trophy later. He's the one who had had the vision of Henley in the East, and while uh, chatting in Rangoon, he said, let's have the Asian Growing Association of the East, and uh, that competition started in early, late, early 1930s. And that's where the rowing has ever since carried on from that. If you look at, look at this precedence list, you'd find it had lieutenant governors, viceroys, and this carries on till about 1898. And uh, where is the first Indian president coming in? It comes in in 1978-79. And that's S.C. Then, a very famous barrister. You do see the name of Mr. Jussel in 1975-77, but he's of he's a British um, he's a British citizen. He used to have a British passport. Uh, in 1970, I joined the club, and the club was still um, with its tradition of having its AGM in the same style as the British would have it. You know, in our AGMs, we had to come with dinner jackets and cummerbunds. We had to come with full um, regalia, and uh, you had to you had to have sit down dinners, and that's the day then ladies were not welcome. It was formal business, and and the menu was. You would salivate if you looked at the menus, but it used to have 10 items and uh, the captain of boats would say, I'm going to give you a 10 now. And he would give you the 10 and he go through the 10 items and then he would say, easy yours. And once the meeting is over and the dinner is over, we would use the spinaches and the Brussels sprouts and, and tomatoes and potatoes and throw it at one another. That was the uh, bonhomie we shared and it was great. Uh, enjoying it that way. We still retain that tradition, but now we've made made it a family event and not just for the men members. Uh, with the whole family is invited on the AGM and uh, the present committee very kindly hosts a full dinner for the whole family, the, husband, the member and the spouse. And uh, they are treated to a lavish lunch and not the dinner. So we move from dinner to lunch, and naturally, the the tradition of wearing a DJ does not arise in in the afternoon. Uh, as you can see, uh, the we have on the other side, uh, 1977-78, Papun Mitro. He's presently the president of the club, and uh, he is um, he was formerly the managing director of Indian Oil. The who's who of society have actually. Uh, being the president of the club. And even in 73, 74, you had Stephen as one of the members. Uh, one of the reasons why I joined the club in the 70s was I was able to beat 20 men, and that was like a reward. You can join our club if you've beaten a Britisher. But later on, they relaxed, and from 71 onwards, slowly we came in. But I must tell you, this all happened because of a judgment passed uh, by the High Court in Pune, where the uh, Pune Club went in for litigation. And by litigation in 1967, the club was handed over to India. And taking a key from that, thereafter, shortly thereafter, 6970, CRC allowed Indian members. So that's the history of how the Indians were allowed. Traditions evolve and they change with the times as, as always happens and has happened with CRC as well, has happened with the sport of throwing. The trophies of CRC tell the stories of its glorious past. The Hoogly Challenge Cup, the Merchants Cup, the Dumain Trophy, the Pagal Regatta Trophies, there is so much silver there. And there's so much more to tell. You tell us a little bit about the races and the trophies, Dr. Mukherjee. You can you can spend the whole day talking about the history of each of these clubs. But as I said, the main trophies, which are very coveted here, 
uh, Willington Falls, the Venable Fair Pairs, which is about pairs, two, two some, McLean Skulls, which is for the single, and the Hoogly Cup. Hoogly Cup was actually uh, given to ARE in, in, in 1956, but it started way back in uh, 1870s, uh, 1890s, there was a row, and uh, that was between Rangoon and CRC, and it, it, it became a major event. But when CRC was formed, uh, when ARE was formed, they decided to give this to the winning team, and it's a very coveted trophy, the winner of the maximum events that you won. So the winner of maximum points gets the Hoogly Cup. So Hoogly Cup is perhaps the most coveted trophy, which goes to the champion. And it's a pride for all clubs to hold it. And if you look at who won the Hoogly Cup, there have been the maximum number of times that has been lifted is by CRC, followed by Lake Club and there's Madras Club. We have also got uh, uh, Trishna, the, there's a Karnataka Club. And uh, there you have the Damayanti Trophy too the Calcutta Rowing Club and uh, the Mayani Trophy. And that, that's the Hoogly Club that you see on the on the left, which is towering there with its history and that huge prize. You know, when uh, for immediately after the war, all these trophies left for Lahore because it was risky keeping these trophies here. And that went to Lahore. And uh, sometime later, we had to bring this back. It was always a problem to gift these trophies or allow these trophies to go to different countries because there were visa problems. So whether it went to Rangoon or Colombo or Karachi, so much of silver leaving the country and then coming back, that has always been an issue. But today we have more or less accepted this, this trophy will move. And happily it has come back to where it started. And uh, that's the Hoogly Cup held in great joy by the CRC. Notice the club colors are being worn there. Uh, the crest of the club, CRC, that's the normal crest we have on our blazers. And our ties, our cufflings, are uh, even, even the uh, buttons, silver buttons, were all crafted in London and Central. The tie, for instance, that I'm wearing came from London. And uh, all our goodies come there. And many of the members of the London Rowing Club are formerly from CRC. So when we had the Sesky Centennial here in 2008, some of them came here to celebrate the occasion. Although they were um, past their 70s, possibly 80s, they came to relish and go down memory lanes of CRC. CRC has an extremely important place in the hearts of all Britishers and we have reciprocal memberships with a lot of clubs there. And uh, only because we are special to British minds and hearts. And I must admit that this is essentially a British uh, sport, which we have inherited. It's a great sport because it helps develop all parts of your uh, body from the legs to the arms, the stomach muscles. It helps you to build up as a team you know, there's a special way, a circular rhythm with which rowing takes place. Say so it's all about team management. You follow the stroke. If he moves up, you look at his shoulder and move up. When he digs in, you drop your blade. When he sort of pushes the blow, blade very fast and it comes up to his chest height, you sort of finish in the same way. And there are puddles of water left at the back and you dip in and dip out at the same time, cajoled and coaxed by the cocks. But the whole point is you work as a team. So more than anything else, rowing teaches you how to work as a team and how the glory is shared. And the respect we give to the Cox is after we win the race, we lift him up bodily at the pontoon and throw him to the water. He gets it for giving us a bad time. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful event because it's just not about concentration, patience, and deliverance, and practice. It's about also feeling and doing it together. There's no one manship there. You have to be together. That's for the rows. Of course, Culls is a different event. You're on your own. There are no coxes. You have to paddle to the water as fast as you can, 
and you self-motivate yourself to win. Pairs is a shorter version of the fours. Double skulls is when you use both your arms together. This is a great exercise, both for women and, and for men. How special all of this is. And, and these are the special tankers, uh, Dr. Mukherjee. Yeah, these uh, are the tankers. All our trophies used to be in pure silver. And uh, the main trophy, as you can see, it is really deep. We used to fill it up with beer and what have you. And everybody would take a swig and uh, from that main trophy. But this is a treasured trophy. I'm so happy that these tankards actually belong to individuals, but when they left the country, as mementos, they left, it, left these trophies with us. Um, even in the Lake Club, which was the Indian version of rowing, Indians were not allowed in CRC. We all started our rowing at Lake Club. We began with some uh, silver tankards or perhaps German silver, and then we moved on to porcelain. But till about 70s, we still had silver tankards in CRC. And you see them there. So that, that's the kind of trophy each individual would get if you won a regatta, if you won a race. And apart from these tankards and apart from all the special elements, there's something, another very, very special uh, memorabilia which is there in CRC. And that is the pankha. Again, the only club in town that must have a punker. Uh, please, Wonderful, this, is, this is really worth talking about. The gym yes. with the punker. It was created at the same time as Howrah Bridge and on the same year. And you can see that motor that used to actually function when I was still actively involved in rowing. I remember these punkers um, sort of swinging up and down and giving the right kind of breeze to cool yourself. You know, you, you sweat profusely when you're rowing. So when you come in and you have an air-conditioned room, you can catch a chill and you can, you can catch a fever with it. So you need to dry yourself well. And uh, I think this was extremely scientifically um, developed that the fan sort of moved up and down, giving the right kind of breeze to dry yourself. After that, you went into the uh, showers and after the showers, of course, you walk down to the bar to, uh, for happy hours. So that's the way it went. And I'm so happy you've been able to show uh, something which is as old as the Howrah Bridge. And we kept that tradition. The club has moved on to modern gadgets, but we still have the punkha and happily at that. That perhaps is the true beauty of the Heritage Club of Calcutta. CRC has history in every nook and corner, in every bit which is, which is there and there with love and respect, some of it being there, some of it being used. But what is the history without its people? What is a club without its members? And this, of course, this particular slide shows us images of a few historic greats from CRC. Yeah, as you can see that uh, on this side, yeah, the man with the gray hair is Sumant Dumra. He is a member of CRC now. Uh, many, and there's uh, next to him, there is, uh, you know, the one sitting down is Sam. I'm looking at the right of the picture. There's Sam Medora, who has uh, won the uh, McLean Skulls, I think, six times. And uh, next to him is Lala Chatterjee, both of Lake Club. They are not members of CRC. You can uh, see beside uh, Mandumra, Girish Vardnis, who has been one of the most prominent oarsmen. And I think you have a clip for him, so he would speak. And, and the picture below, it's he and his wife and his brother. And uh, right there on the corner is the uh, secretary of the club, Chandan Rai Choudhury, who's perhaps manned the club for more than 30 years at its stretch. Sumant is sitting down there. I've been fortunate to have him in my crew. I was the captain of the rowing team, but he is both a stroke, an oarsman, as well as a scholar. He's one of the most prominent scholars the waters of Calcutta has seen. And uh, the biggest ever was Sam, Sam Medora, who after an accident on the, on the lake, stopped rowing. And the picture that you 
have on the other side is with Kalidas, also of eminent horsemen. The ones missing would be Gurnani and, uh, and Satyanath Mukherjee, who represented the club in, in Asia's and in national events. So let's have Girish and his, uh, and his small speech. When we talk about the history of rowing, one cannot not mention the Calcutta Rowing Club. The oldest club east of Suez started way back in 1858 and now we are into 2021. A club which has been associated with rowing for rowing over these years and has been a key player in the rowing fraternity in India and Asia. They were the pioneers to conduct major championships and in the year 1976 when the rowing federation was formed we had a key people from Calcutta Rowing Club who were involved in the formation. Those days in 76 or 75 or the early 70s mm -hmm. CRC had only mainly foreigners who were members and around the middle of 1975 around 74 and 75 we had rows from other clubs who were who migrated to crc legends like suman dumra kavas kapadia shodinath mukherjee vijay gurnani ashok datta sham bakshi to name a few i had the privilege of rowing with these stalwarts at a very young age and maybe that was the start of my uh, rowing career in a very high level of competitive form. In 1977, we had the first nationals and I had the privilege of stroking the senior force, even though I was a junior roseman then, along with a club fellow rower, Shotinath Mukherjee, who was of course in his prime at that age and I was much younger to these people. And Bengal swept practically all the events in the first nationals which created history and then there was no stopping. We had we had our club at the top of practically all championships, whether it was local, domestic, Yari or Fiera. CRC dominated. CRC was always a club to reckon with and around the end of 1970, there was talks of the first Asian Games taking place. Fortunate enough to be representing India and rode in the 1982 Asian Games, which was held in Ramgarh, Jaipur. We had Mr. Dumra also in the Games along with Kalidas and Ranjan Banerjee in the force. And it was the start of a new era in rowing. CRC has been the pioneers, like I said. We still have one of the oldest boats, the clinker boats, which are no more in competitive use with the advent of carbon fiber and other high sophisticated uh, boats and equipment. But we have the proud privilege of still maintaining these boats in our club. And the memories continue just like the memorabilia do. Yeah. There is a list of <laughs> there is a list of complaints that I see. 101 years of complaints. Uh, this is so interesting. A club which is over 152 years has a list of complaints which is more than 101 years. And then again, of course, there are telegrams. Telegrams retrieved from your archives, these are of great historic values. Uh, and most importantly, every heritage club is known for its gastronomic delight. The menu sounds delicious. Look at the potages, the filet de vetke, la mayonnaise, the salmon, totally mouthwatering. Menu sounds delicious, Dr. Mukherjee. How was it in the olden days, sir? 
as I said, the AGMs were uh, something that all Oldsman looked in, looked forward to because that's the time when we really dug in. And uh, the menu, as you can see, are typically British with bitki and uh, goose and uh, and and even turkey and all the all the kind of things which salmons. But now uh, we've changed the menu. It's got a lot of Indian stuff, which the palettes have changed, and so have our designs. But the idea of stuffing up and gorging continues yeah. to remain. And uh, it was great to have uh, the food, even now, the, the food quality in, in CRC is one of the best. And if you visit our uh, tavern, and I invite you to do that, uh, your spirits will naturally be high, both by decor and by service. Uh, this is one of the best places to be in, in, in any evening. The, you did mention, uh, Dr. Mukherjee, about the islands. Uh, one does understand that the Dhakuria lakes were the artificially, uh, artificial, it's a man-made lake. And there is this beautiful masjid which stands there from the yesteryears, the Fani Masjid at the crossroads of where the roads used to be and now the waters flow yeah there are uh, there are as, as as you can see the the island that you see there is a boat when you when you leave the pontoon you move right and go under that uh, suspension bridge which is attached to mosque island which is called the funny funny mosque and just at the distance you you wait for boats from lake club to take off and the right of passage is for anybody who's moving backwards and reaching, going to the top. And then you go up to that other island, which is called the Kidney Island. And you wait there again before you swiftly cross onto the other side, because this, if you look straight down from this pontoon, you can see the end of the lake. And this is your thousand yard course uh, to your north would be, yeah, that's the, that's the, to the north, you would have uh, the, Calcutta side on onto your south, just before you uh, touch the Mosque Island, you have Tolly. So between Calcutta and Tolly, you have that straight course, as you can see that shining part at the end, that's the end of the lake. And this is a straight thousand yards race dash. So you have uh, the Mosque Island, the Kidney Island, and the Top Island. And when you go around the Top Island, you have a straight course and the serenity of the water gets destroyed by the the passion and the valor of the oarsmen but after they go into the pontoon what you're left with is still waters and a most enjoyable evening in fact there's a mystical joy when you sit on the banks and look at the river because you're looking at history you're looking at tranquility you're looking at peace and you're looking at togetherness. And how beautiful is that? The thousand yards of serenity, the thousand yards of, of history, and the almost hundred uh, years of history. They remain, they were there, they remain even today. So that's the Fani Masjid, a spectator to it all. What was there then now remains the tradition and the glory continues. It has indeed been an absolute pleasure, Dr. Mukherjee, to talk to you and to know more about the beautiful historic reality of Calcutta Rowing Club and the other the glorious traditions that it still holds. But as we spoke, there are many questions which have come in. And yeah. allow me to ask, uh, ask a few questions. One question is, how is the club ensuring to inculcate interest in the sport with the newer generation, Dr. Mukherjee. Yeah, this is a sore point for most of us. We are doing a lot. Uh, but the question is, there are no pickups. I mean, to quote Raj Lakshmi Singh Deo, the president of Ro 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 Rowing Federation of India, for three terms, she herself uh, has recorded a displeasure because she says, for the last so many years, I'm seeing the same faces representing the country. So women or the youth are not coming in large measures as they should, because this is a complete exercise. When we were in the 60s decade, there was a lot of activity and um, 
and you know busyness uh, on the waters but now it's quite a pain to get these people on uh, though rowing has come of age you know uh, we started uh, participating in, in in the asian as you, as you've heard and from 19 uh, in 19 to 2010 we won the first gold medal in in china and the person to win it was Baj bajrang lal thakkar and in the same year pratima fukan and pramila prava means uh, the coxless pair from orissa odisha they won a medal too but earlier to that, we've been winning only bronze medals. One of the reasons why we have not been making, making it big and really uh, going on to the Olympics, there's another prominent oarsman, Sanjukta Dung Dung, winning the gold in the nationals and having represented India 2014 and 2018 in Asia. Sai has taken on this activity and there are two rowing centers, Alipi in Kerala and Jagatpur in Odisha. Now that itself is a problem because you don't have one single training center. So uh, you can't really bring in people there. Uh, initially, I would have thought Calcutta should have been the place where we would have trained people. But you know, when you spread your activities to three or four places, it's very difficult to groom them. I do remember some of the oarsmen felt complaining about having to pay uh, money to be on the Thailand trip they were asked to contribute to go to it. And that's not the kind of thing that makes people happy. But be that as it may, the fact is, we do not have rowing coming up in the way that it should. Although there is Rowing Federation of India, the, the, there is a lot of activity on, and we have had our own oarsmen, for instance, Mayurakshi uh, Mukti, she has done very well, and she is perhaps a medal getter on the, on the line. But again, she is over the hills. We should be having, like cricket, new faces coming up every year. Now, that's not happening in rowing. And therefore, the youth are encouraged to take up this activity. There couldn't be a more wholesome sport than rowing. And I'm sure CRC has put its right foot forward. We want rowing members. We want the clubs to come in. You know, if you look at England, 1828 was where the Cambridge University Rowing Club started. Calgary started its rowing club in 2000. Calcutta University had its possibly the first rowing club uh, way back in 1918. And that was in Maniktala Canal. And then uh, they moved on to Robinda Shorabar by 18, 20, uh, 1929, which is 100 years later. Even then, Calcutta was ahead of rowing compared to Canada, compared to many other countries in the world. But with such a head start, we've now got China, we've got Thailand, we have other countries coming forward, and India is not really making it to the Olympics and not lifting the goal that it should. With such a large population, so much of waterway, so much of opportunities, and so much of talent, I think much lead, needs to be done about rowing to see it achieve its pristine glory, which it should by now. Well, we certainly hope that this glorious tradition and this beautiful sport continues in the ensuing and coming generations for many, many more generations, many, many years to come. But there is another very interesting question, Dr. Mukherjee, and let me ask you that. The lake that houses the club is man-made. How was the lake created and how well does it work for rowing? How was the lake created and it how was, well does it work for it rowing? The marshy land and CIT sort of thought that this would be an ideal place to dig it up for rowing and and our own oarsmen were actually finding it difficult to row in the hugli because you have barges you have ferries you have different boats which raise huge waves occasionally and that becomes very very difficult for the oarsmen so we were looking at a nesting place and the first opportunity we got in 1928 we came in but remember that this is a man-made lake lake where the three islands were kept intact. It's for beautification as well as for necessity. If you didn't know, they are haven for rare species of birds. It's, you have the finest birds coming into these. And if you're rowing and you're a pantheist and you believe in nature, you should be an oarsman going past these uh, islands. 
uh, from ducks to goose to uh, a, a very rare kinds of birds. And they are also infested with a lot of snakes. But that's, that's a side, that's the flip side of the story. Initially, the water level was low, so it was difficult to row. But thanks to the underground water and rainfall, the, the, the water level has gone up and now it's, it's risky capsizing there, not just for the snakes, but because you meet around. So it, it is rather deep uh, rowing there. So it's no longer a problem. You can row to your heart's delight and it's, it's very serene and it's very nice. It's still one of the best places. So that's how rowing, with, it's an artificial lake created in the lap of nature, bringing back nature and giving you all the uh, niceties that you want if you're a lonely person or even if you believe in rebellion and crowd. Beautiful natural beauty indeed. And there is so much more to talk about. One can go on for hours. The time is really, really running out. Uh, we've, it's almost been an hour. There is just one last uh, question come suggestion that I would like to uh, ask you or leave with you, Dr. Mukherjee. And that is, why not open the club as part of a heritage trail of Kolkata with a room dedicated to its illustrious history? Uh, that is something which, which is pretty close to, uh, to the heart. Why not open the club as a part of a heritage trail of Kolkata with a room dedicated to its history, uh, Dr. Mukherjee? I think the management has already heard you because we have newly created a reception room where you have all those trophies which you took a picture of. And that's the heritage room because the history of the club, the viceroys, the uh, whoever were the presidents, the secretaries, all the trophies are kept in glittering uh, contrast. Yes, I wish we could keep all the boats that were there, but we don't have enough space because uh, the boats require its own space. But I think I'll pass on, and this is a good uh, opening for you to expose your ideas. We need to have a heritage room there. We could perhaps make that the heritage room because of want of space. You know, it's very difficult getting space and with the crowd and population in Calcutta going up. And it's become more a social club than a sporting club because of the 2,500 plus members. Um, very few actually indulge in rowing anymore. Essentially, it used to be a sports club, but now it's going into social status. So room is always at a premium and uh, we will find it difficult to get that space. But I think that's a great idea. Walking into CRC is itself walking into time and destiny and heritage. It's, it's, uh, it tells you a whole world of stories. And would you believe it? People do say there are parts of that club which are haunting. And thanks for that because the Britishers are still love to come back to their homes. May the spirits continue and uplift us all. It's been indeed an absolutely scintillating conversation. Dr. Mukherjee, we really thank you for coming and, and enlightening us about the history, the tradition, and the glory of Calcutta Rowing Club. Uh, the clubs of Calcutta are, are huge historical monuments and we take it very casually. It's part of our lives, but it's a part of history. Um, on behalf of the committee and all the club members, as one of the senior most members of the club, I would like to thank Calcutta Heritage for doing us this honor and favor of giving us special time and for such lovely people, beautiful people too, covering this event for us. So like our garden, you've made our day. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Mukherjee.